And now we're going to hand over to the next speaker. Um, and I'm just checking my notes, who is going to be uh, either Danielle Scholley or Catherine Hubner from uh, USFDA to talk about lessons learned from uh, FDA's approach to African swine fever. So over to the next speaker, please. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. And can you see my video? It's coming on now. Yep, we've got your slides up. All right. Good morning. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak today. My name is Kate Hubner. I am a veterinarian from the FDA Center for Veterinary Medicine in the Office of Surveillance and Compliance. My colleague, Danielle Shawley, will be co-presenting with me today. Danielle is an animal scientist in CVM's Office of New Animal Drug Evaluation. We will be speaking on behalf of the FDA African Swine Fever Working Group about FDA's collaborative approach to outbreak preparedness for African swine fever. All right, next slide. Here is what we will be covering today. We'll start with background information about the virus, followed by a discussion of the global impacts of this foreign animal disease. We'll then cover some of the recent activities of the ASF work group, including our collaborative response framework and One Health approach. All right, next slide, please. African swine fever is a highly contagious viral disease that results in hemorrhagic fever of both domestic and wild pigs. It spreads rapidly and has a high morbidity and mortality rate. It does not impact the health of animals other than swine, and it is not transmissible to humans, but the disease affects global food security. It has never been detected in the United States to date. However, if it were introduced, it would have devastating economic impacts for the United States swine producers. Disease transmission is influenced by human, animal, and environmental factors. Since the virus can persist stably in the environment, it can be transmitted through contaminated materials and, life, for example, uh, livestock trucks and people. The virus can also be transmitted through animal feed. The practice of feeding uncooked food waste, also known as swill, and contaminated meat or carcasses to other pigs can also result in transmission. Another mode of viral transmission that is an active area of research is through contaminated manufactured animal feeds, such as feed mill equipment and the feed itself. Viral vectors such as flies and soft ticks, along with wildlife reservoirs, such as warthogs and wild boars also play a role. Unfortunately, there is no available vaccine or treatment for ASF. Although development of novel vaccines is an active area of research, but there are several challenges to development of vaccines, including a lack of knowledge involved in mechanisms of protection and the antigens involved. And this is in part due to the complexity of this large ASF DNA virus. Currently, the primary method of control is prevention through biosecurity measures, along with depopulation of affected or exposed swine. Next slide, please. ASF has caused significant pig losses globally. The disease is endemic to Sub-Saharan Africa. However, beginning in August of 2018, the disease emerged in Eastern Asia, expanding uncontrollably and resulting in significant losses. According to a 2020 World Organization for Animal Health report, the highest impacts were reported in China, with over 6 million animals lost, accounting for at least 80% of the total global reported losses to date. During this period, several countries in Eastern Europe also reported the first occurrence of the disease with uncontrolled spread and devastating impacts. While ASF is not a direct threat to human health or human food safety, it is a major threat to animal health and global food security. For example, the impacts of mass animal depopulation and subsequent animal disposal presents major challenges for animal welfare, environmental safety, and of course, uh, impacts on those farmers and communities who have to depopulate their animals. Animal losses also impact the ability to provide safe and available animal protein for human and animal food supply. For example, the outbreak in 
of African swine fever in China has been shown, has, was shown to increase pork prices in some regions by 17 to 85%. It also led to an unmet, unmet demand for pork products, driving increases of other meat, such as beef and poultry. Another challenge is identifying potential supply chain disruptions from materials derived from pig tissues, uh, such as animal feed and certain pharmaceutical products like replacement heart valves and insulin, for example. So considering all of these impacts, a multidisciplinary, multi-sectoral, and multilateral One Health approach with effective allocation of resources is clearly critical to control the further spread, including introduction to the United States. Next slide, please. Because ASF has not been detected in the US, the US government's emphasis is on prevention, detection, and response planning. Generally, USDA is the lead agency involved with foreign animal disease prevention and surveillance, whereas FDA's role is focused on the review and or approval of any potential viral mitigants that meet the definition of a food additive or animal drug. FDA's responsibility is towards ensuring a safe animal feed supply, and it covers all domestic and imported animal food except for meat, poultry, processed, egg, and processed eggs, which are primarily under the responsibility of USDA Food Safety and Inspection Service. FDA is primarily involved in monitoring and setting standards for feed contaminants, including those in pet food, approving safe food additives for animal use, and managing FDA's medicated feed program. Under the Swine Health Protection Act, USDA is involved in regulation of food waste, such as garbage, that may contain any meat products fed to swine to ensure that the food waste is properly treated to kill disease organisms. Under FSMA, Preventative Controls for Animal Food Regulation, FDA is involved in the prevention of food safety hazards to food for all animal species and applies primarily to non-farm facilities. Next slide, please. So the, African, the FDA African Swine Fever Work Group was formed in 2019 to coordinate a disease response plan promoting outbreak preparedness. This includes collaborative efforts with our colleagues at USDA, state regulators, and the animal food industry. Uh, examples of specific activities include coordinating with our China office for potential joint USDA-FDA inspections in Chinese pet food facilities. USDA and FDA have also worked together with the pork and animal food industry and academia through the Feed Risk Task Force to share ideas and discuss the latest ongoing research. Also, FDA produces a field bulletin which alerts FDA staff who are conducting foreign inspections regarding appropriate biosecurity measures that they need to take when going to ASF positive regions to perform an inspection. Another major focus of our work group since its initiation has been the development of the FDA African Swine Fever Draft Response Plan. I will now turn it over to Danielle, who's going to go into this plan in a little bit more detail. Danielle, I think you may be on mute. Hi, yes, good afternoon, everybody. There's so many buttons to manage um, <laughs> for this virtual environment. Um, so thank you so much, Kate, um, for, your, um, for your presentation. So an introduction to ASF and the ASF work group. So we're happy to share um, that the draft response plan has gone through FDA and USDA review and final comments are currently being addressed. The draft response plan was developed using incident command principles to manage an FDA ASF response. The plan addresses UF, gonna get the mic up, FDA authorities, roles, and resources needed, which is an example of the chain and unity of command principles as part of the incident command um, program. 
This principle clarifies reporting relationships, eliminates confusion, and ensures that incident managers are able to control the actions of all personnel under their supervision. FDA's response plan has two main objectives. First is to identify the critical activities involved to detect, respond to, and contain ASF and prevent further spread of the disease in animal food. And secondly, to facilitate um, swift normalization and distribution of animal food in impacted areas. Our draft response plan also addresses three key strategies. The first being able to provide clean animal food, thus protecting animal health, which has an impact on economic trade in terms of keeping the United States ASF virus free and ensuring that products imported into the United States are also ASF virus free. Secondly, the, the serious concerns of spreading of this virus off of an infected premise, such as in a farm or a feed mill, um, the draft response plan addresses and discusses biosecurity measures an investigator would need to address, and in, can dur address during an inspection. Biosecurity reaches far past an impacted facility as um, Kate mentioned, contaminated clothing, vehicles, and or equipment can also transmit the virus. Um, the third key strategy identified in the response plan touches on FDA's goals, one of FDA's goals, which is to conduct trace forward and trace back investigations. In this context, trace forward and trace back activities can include collecting records on animal food or ingredients received or distributed by a particular facility. Again, the ability to identify contaminated animal food or ingredients in a timely manner helps facilitate the normal distribution of non-contaminated animal food to other animal production facilities such as swine, cattle, or poultry farms in those surrounding areas in the event of an ASF outbreak. In addition to the draft in addition to the draft response plan, the work group has also created an ASF webpage on FDA CVM's website. This publicly available resource was created to provide a high level overview of ASF and to provide transparency on the center's response to this foreign animal disease. The webpage also re reiterates CVM's commitment to working with sponsors to help facilitate the review and approval of products intended to prevent ASF infection and viral spread. Additionally, resource links are provided, such as USDA's African Swine Fever webpage and CVM's Food Additive Petitions of Animal Food and FDA Regulation of Animal Drugs documents. To further highlight the importance of a One Health approach in terms of disease outbreak preparedness, we wanted to briefly illustrate the complexity of such a contagious disease. This figure shown has been borrowed from the Red Book, which is USDA's African Swine Fever Response Plan in draft um, in April 2020. This figure is, is an example of what the Red Book calls a stamping out strategy where a potentially infected premise or infected group of feral pigs are depopulated. As part of the coordinated response, Designated zones and areas surrounding the premise are identified and used in quarantine and movement control efforts. As you might imagine, in the case of an outbreak, there could be several agencies such as federal, state, and local entities involved to contain such an incident. And depending on the location of the infected premise or population of feral swine, um, where you have a lightly populated area versus a location which may span county lines or state lines, the coordinated efforts to contain such an incident could potentially, could exponentially um, be more complicated to manage and require additional coordination with multiple entities. Therefore, as Kate mentioned before, prevention and control of this deadly disease is really twofold. Uh, first, by keeping the foreign animal disease out of the United States, and then secondly, dealing with any disease issues that affect our nation's animal herds through measures such as early detection and biosecurity measures. Although various resources exist 
to educate, inform, and act on different aspects of preventing and containing ASF, the fact still remains that ASF is a very deadly disease. As part of our cross-sector collaboration, representatives from USDA, FDA, and various swine industry representatives have participated in tabletop exercises intended to educate and prepare for an ASF outbreak. These exercises provide information on why and who is involved if a response plan needs to be implemented. These proactive exercises are also beneficial, as you can imagine, to prepare for swift action in the case of such um, an actual disease outbreak. FDA and the Center for Veterinary Medicine are also reaching across other federal agencies, primarily USDA and state regulators, to further build onto our collaborative efforts um, in managing such a response. In the case of disease outbreak preparedness, a One Health approach truly highlights the need for enhanced communication and coordination among different stakeholders. In conclusion, FDA's role in disease outbreak preparedness and, develop, and in developing our draft response plan for African spine fever are both great examples of utilizing a One Health approach to one showcase why and how um, to consider the three principles of One Health um, as human, animal, and environmental health. As, and as just mentioned, um, tabletop exercises help proactively prepare individuals with the necessary tools needed to um, provide a rapid response in the event of an incident. Our efforts have also identified anticipated challenges specific to the ASF disease threat and um, have utilized utilize risk mitigation in the context of such a threat, such as considering all potential routes of viral transmission as we discussed through contaminated materials, um, infected carcasses, and um, vectors such as the soft tick. Also including safe animal food transportation and biosecurity measures. Our ongoing enhancement of collaboration and coordination with other government agencies and industries, industry entities are um, highly valued. Um, we realize that reaching across such entities is not always easy, but implementing a One Health approach is a step in the right direction to attain the best possible outcome. And lastly, FDA and the Center for Met Veterinary Medicine continues our commitment to human and animal safety, animal food safety, and environmental safety, even in the face of disease threats and outbreaks. We have gained wisdom from past and present human and animal disease outbreaks, for example, COVID-19, BSE, and porcine epidemic diarrhea, and also their development of previous FDA response plan type documents. As such, the success of any disease outbreak response plan should truly follow the science and requires teamwork to resolve the outbreak expeditiously. And in preparing for this presentation, another work group member actually shared the following quote with us, where President Dwight Eisenhower stated, in preparing for battle, I've always found that plans are useless, but planning is indispensable. For Kate and I, it really drove home the value of systematizing a One Health approach and encompasses the essence of the work accomplished by the FDA ASF work group since July, 2019. Um, and in closing, we just wanted to mention how grateful we are for the commitment by all the work group members and for CVM and the Office of Regulatory Affairs Leadership for supporting our efforts. And on behalf of our work group, we'd also like to extend our sincerest thank you to NASM and the Workshops Planning Committee for today's speaking in invitation. Well, th thank you very much, Danielle and Kate. That, that's uh, It's absolutely impressive to see you working at such a sensitive and difficult issue on a global scale over the past few years and uh, that cannot be 